You have a limited amount of courage and you have a limited amount of discipline. Let's say you get 10 disciplines a day. You actually don't even get that. You probably get two to three to be honest. So you might use your willpower to um, do one area of your life and then you find it's very hard to do another area. Who here is magically balancing all three? <laughs> yeah, nobody. Why? Too much discipline. You're already out of discipline. You're out of willpower. You gotta, you gotta moderate how it's being used daily. You gotta assess your life to understand where you're losing it. For example, last night my buddies were like, go out. And I went out for food, but I couldn't go out to five in the morning because then I couldn't do this now at three. That's just a very practical example. So I wanna be analyzing here, where are your fake victories? Maybe you have a job and that job gets you a short-term check, but it's burning your time that you could be using to building a skill. Remember we talked just now about your core strengths? Maybe there's some core strength that you could be using that time to build up. So you've gotta be aware of that as well, okay? There's that expression that I heard, if you don't have 10 minutes a day to meditate, then you don't have a day. That's a very, very true saying. And when you break it down, I think if you can't find 10 minutes to just prioritize where your energies are going, then you don't have a day, you're wasting it. And they just told me, somebody, somebody is calling on your phone and it says Persian lover. <laughs> well, that's why you saved my name and that's, that's why you don't know my name. Oh, no, what's your name? Is your name Bob? Is it Mark? Let's talk about two types of relationships. The relationships that you have and the relationships that you don't have. Let's see why you don't have those relationships. My guess is burnout. Burnout is why you don't have the relationships that you want. And I've dealt with that personally in my life. My experience was, and I'm probably a lot like yours, so you hopefully can relate to it. I was in high school, in fact, adult ed, doing light classes. So on one hand, I was just trying to manage too much. I had a professional career that was happening in the daytime, a job I was so lucky to get and I just wanted to hold on to it. In the nighttime, I had high school. In fact, I was doing my adult ed, trying to get my high school degree. And I had all bunch of like health issues that were happening at the same time and just family stuff. Everything drove me down. There was no longer any energy left to pursue the passions that I wanted in life, like making videos, traveling, and meeting new people. I suffered and there was less of me to give to other people. And therefore, I didn't have those relationships. I could not relate to other people. So what I want to do today is take an audit of your life. I suspect there's areas that are like a bucket with water and a hole at the bottom. So the water's just dripping out. Before you know it, there's nothing left inside of you. Once we have that auto, we can figure out where you're losing energy. And then the next step we're gonna do together is we're gonna figure out how to direct the energy to areas that you want to see progress and results. Most likely personal relationships because that affects everything else. So you got me in this video, one and truly. We got Owen, AKA Tyler, breaking it down as well. Whenever we get together, it's a legendary video and it's gonna be a classic. So this is something you don't wanna miss. And I guarantee you, man, you'll be really satisfied with the results you see in your life. Stay tuned. If you're charismatic, it takes effort to maintain it. If you're charismatic, it takes application. If you're charismatic, it invites tension. Wanted attention and unwanted attention. It's like a beautiful woman or a beautiful guy. If you're charismatic, people might get jealous of you, envy you, and have conflict with you. That's how much we care about this, about our relationship to other people. We're such social creatures, we care about relationship to other people so much. So even, thank you by the way, so even the act of being um, not charming, it's an interpersonal problem. You're like, ah, if I'm charming, I gotta maintain it. It takes courage, it takes discipline, it takes energy. Ah, fuck that, I'm not gonna do it. So here's the idea. You have a limited amount of courage. You have a very, very limited amount. And you have a limited amount of discipline. Let's say you get 10 disciplines a day. You actually don't even get that. You probably get two to three to be honest. Two to three to be honest. It's a, uh, a really old book called The Willpower Instinct. Don't read it, it's a shit book. Okay, I want to save you the time. It's like one, I it's one of these books, it's like an, an idea stretched across 10 chapters and you're like, this was a waste of time, okay? It's got one idea. And the idea of this book, The Willpower Instinct, is that you have a certain amount of willpower every day. And if you use it all up, it's gone. It's like gas in a gas tank. So you might use your willpower to um, do one area of your life and then you find it's very hard to do another area. 
I know you all have this, the challenge of balancing dating and work. Exactly. Hard, one, one usually gives out. Balancing dating and health. Mm -hmm. Or you're trying to balance your health and your work and what happens to dating, right? Who here, is, who here is magically balancing all three? <laughs> yeah, nobody. Why? Too much discipline. You're already out of discipline. You're out of willpower. So the book says you have willpower. You have a certain amount of it. You gotta, you gotta moderate how it's being used daily. You gotta assess your life to understand where you're losing it. That make sense? Because you don't have enough to go around. It's not like you have this amount and this amount and this amount. You don't have enough to go around. So I'll tell you how I do it personally in my life. In my life, um, I have to be very, very careful about who I speak to. So if I give my energy of communication to too many people, I'll have nothing for the seminar, right? So for example, last night my buddies were like, go out, and I went out for food, but I couldn't go out to five in the morning because then I couldn't do this now at three. That's just a very practical example but it happens every day. I'll, go, I'll put up a new video, I'll go onto YouTube, there'll be a comment, this sucks, ugh, gross, what a shitty video. And I see the comment is literally like two minutes after I posted the video, and it's a one hour long video. So I know the guy watched two minutes of the video or none of the video at all because it's a one hour long video, and he posted a comment right after I made the video upload. And I have to resist myself of going, Oh, you didn't fucking watch the video. I had to resist it. Because that's like, how much percent of willpower is that? It's like 5%. It's not a lot, but there's little drains throughout the day. Getting sucked into internet troll battles or online shit where you're arguing with people, that takes a little bit of willpower away from you. Okay? So we all have these moments throughout the day. When you get into a fight with a relative that you know the fight is coming, that's a little bit of willpower gone. Whatever you, so the difference between willpower and energy. Energy is, right, when you're playing a video game, it's energy. Willpower is the spark that makes the change. So you have sparks to do maybe one or two hard things in a day. That's it. There's a great book also by Brian Tracy called Eat the Frog. And he talks about waking up in the morning and doing the thing that intimidates you the most. So that's like waking up in the morning and like getting the STD test. <laughs> that would be the thing that scares you the most in the morning because you've been putting it off for like weeks. You know what I'm saying? Or waking up in the morning and calling the grand, uh, your grandmother who you've been promising you to call for a month. That takes willpower. So we spend energy in all kinds of ways, but willpower is that initial the spark to, to do the hard thing. So if you spend energy in the wrong areas, you have no spark for willpower. This expression that I heard, I don't know who invented this expression, but the expression is, if you don't have 10 minutes a day to meditate, then you don't have a day, right? And that's a very, very true saying. And when you break it down, I think it's all about what we're saying right here, that the core of it is, if you can't find 10 minutes to just prioritize where your energies are going, then you don't have a day, you're wasting it. You know, Julian was up here the other day, Julian talked about when you get up in the morning, the first thing you do is you check your cell phone in the dark, or you know, pick it up and the, the blue light hits you in the face. That's the first light you see before the crack of day is your cell phone light. Right, so your energy is going to people that have posted pictures. Maybe your energy is going to Tinder. I'm personally guilty of that. But hey, I get paid to do Tinder, so it's kind of like a, a job. I'm like, I say, it's my job. It's my job to do Tinder, so I, I say it's that. But really, my energy is going to where? People who maybe don't respect it, don't appreciate it. And then I come in a room in a seminar like this with you guys, and it's 1 o'clock in the morning. And if I can't give you my love, my attention, my focus, then I have failed you. So I have to be very, very careful about my energies. Even in the street, sometimes, uh, fans of RSD, because it's a great family, great tribe we have here, right? We're all soldiers in this together. Fans of RSD will come to me and say, hey, Madison, I love what you do. Uh, when are the next time you guys are in town? I was like, oh, I, I was just here. I just did a free tour. And he's like, oh, man, that's amazing. I'm like, you're going to come to the next one? He's like, oh, man, can't make it. Man. Yeah, it's so crazy when we see that. We see it, it every day. Yeah, and I'm like, what do you, you, mean, you mean to tell me that I got on an airplane and I flew across the country and I got this venue for $1,000 or whatever it is, and I got this place, and I, I sat, or I stood up and ranted and raved for three to four hours, and for whatever reason, you couldn't come see me for free, and you have no intentions or no plans of coming to the next one, but you want this picture right now? Bro, I'm failing you. I'm failing you. I can't give that guy my energy, because I'm actually teaching him this is the way to go about treating his own energy. I'm setting a bad example for him if I do that, 
right? So I got to learn myself, even as an instructor, and I, I learned this more and more, time goes on and on and on, how to manage my own energy and how to treat that. And, how, and you know, people you constantly run into daily, you're tr teaching them how to treat you. You're also teaching them how to manage their own energies, right? So it's a symbiotic process where we do it here, then you go out in the club and you do it, and then maybe you go somewhere else and that person does it. It's a, it's a harmony thing that kind of moves around society. So it's not, you know, being selfish with your energy does not mean you're being selfish. You know, for yourselves, you might say, people, you, know, you came out of Vegas for a week to hang out in Vegas for a week, and people might say, that's absolutely crazy, that's insane, why would you go and do that? But you guys see the bigger opportunity here. You're like, this week, if I invest time in this week, I'm gonna forever change the trajectory of my life for the next few months and years to come. So, you know, that going down the crop alley, we got a great story out of it. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool, I appreciate that. But, you know, going down there for so many hours, constantly, constantly, was an opportunity cost as well. What could you do with that time? Not only the energy, mm -hmm. but the time, the motivation, the willpower. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's not even get into that. That's another whole other story. And I feel like I wouldn't take back that we did it, because it was fun. I loved it. But yeah, I loved it too. But like, then when I just started doing the math on like, well, what if we just got way better food at home? What if I got staff to prepare it? Like there was so many other ways of doing it that made more sense. And then from there, it's not that I regret what I did in the past, like that shit was all awesome. But I've got bigger goals now. I just have other things, there's other goals that I wanna accomplish in my life at this point that are a lot more challenging and I need that two hours back because that two hours back a day, that's 10 hours a week. I need to reclaim those 10 hours and so on and so forth. It's like when I dumped my girlfriend who's always nagging me. Yeah, it sucked to do it, but I got back. It was weird because I miss her, but while I miss her, I'm getting more energy. It's really freaky. You ever dump somebody and like, you really miss them, both physically and emotionally, and yet your energy is just surging? Who here has ever experienced that? Isn't that freaking weird? It's like, you're like, I've got so much, you're like, I forgot. I forgot that I had this much energy. I forgot that I'm this powerful, but I'm lonely and I want to get laid. It's the weirdest thing in, in a breakup. Like literally, it's like so many conflicting emotions. Well, when you look at that in your breakup, you got to ask yourself, what other things are sucking energy? And then when you start shipping off all those things that are sucking energy and then focusing in on the things that are giving, you can recraft your life in a way that you've got more energy, more time, more money, more everything. and. What did we just do? We talked about core strengths. This gives you the chance to focus on your core strengths. Here's another little bit of willpower gone. When you see somebody you wanna to talk to, you wanna approach them, and you, you walk, you start to walk, but then you turn around, you turn off, you don't do it. That's a little bit of willpower gone, wasted. Just like thrown on the floor. So you have limited amounts. And what's it gonna to take to jump up those levels, by the way? Willpower, to make the courage, the discipline, that's what it's gonna take. So, we all need to do an audit of our life and figure out where we're wasting willpower. I'll give you an example of one of my uh, uh, old assistants named Oliver. It's gonna be a fun one. No. All right, so, I got this assistant, okay? It was a little while ago, his name was Oliver, and now I've just smeared his name throughout, throughout the whole RST community, okay? So, our, Oliver was a really uh, smart guy. He believed he was very smart. He believed he was a very smart person. He's like, I'm an intelligent, rational human being. I went to a good school in England. I'm a smart guy. But even as a smart person, sometimes you do things you're like, what, what, is, what is he doing? Why, why? The biggest one was I brought Oliver on board to help us work on the Get Your 10 program. Helped us record it, edit it, and everything. I'm not paying your hotel. I'm not paying your airfare. I'm not paying your food not paying anything. You gotta be able to take care of yourself for three months. It's a pretty good deal because you end up getting like 20 or $30,000 worth of education afterwards. So, Oliver says, all right, to intern with Madison, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like cut back on some money. I'm gonna save some cash. Smart idea. How's he gonna save cash? In his lodgings, so where he's gonna sleep, and his food. So instead of getting like high quality food, high caliber food that keeps his brain like mentally sharp, which you have to do, because our job is hard. We're switching time zones, we're going to different countries, right? Like my body thinks right now it's like 8 p.m. Like my body has no idea what time it is, right? Lots of energy is put out there. So because of the time zone shifts, I've got to eat a salad, at least one salad a day, squeeze it in there. I'm not having more than two coffees a day, because it's like adrenal fatigue, right? 
I have to monitor my health, go to cryotherapy, take very, very good care of my health. It doesn't mean like I'm in the gym every day, but I'm monitoring my health and taking supplements all the time. So I gotta have high quality food to produce high quality results. But Oliver, what he started to do, he started to like compromise on that. He's like, all right, to intern with Madison, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go cheap. I'm gonna get the cheapest food possible. I'm gonna eat at 7-Eleven, which is like the equivalent of like Monoprix here, okay? I'm gonna eat at Monoprix. And then he decides to also buy bread. He's eating bread and like fucking peanut butter. Like it's some like, I don't know, the old like communism shit. I don't know what's going on, okay? <laughs> Walking on this bread and peanut butter. And also, was it flour or was it fruit? Or was it melons? It was melons, right? Yeah. Okay, it was melons. So he saw this great deal on melons, like, like fruit at the store. And he has these melons and he decides, okay, I'm gonna buy these and keep them. Now, the thing is, when you buy melons, you're buying like eight or 10 at a time. So you can't eat 10 melons in three days. <laughs> you can't do it, bro, it's not healthy for you. So he's got the 10 melons and now all of a sudden, we change cities every, every Saturday, so, I'm sorry, every Sunday. So it's Sunday, it's time to check out our hotel. Hey, Oliver, we're calling the Airbnb. Hold up, let me pack up my melons for a bit. <laughs> I got one suitcase, Jesse's got the other, Oliver's got his suitcase, plus the melons, plus he had four coats. Because he didn't want to like, like he kept buying like these cheap coats, like, it's a good deal, I should buy the coat, right? Like, so he had like four coats, and these melons, and then we get to the airport, and we're at airport security now, and he's gotta get through airport security. And he's trying to like check like these melons, like on the scanner, he's like putting them here, and they're going through the conveyor belt, and the guy at customs is like, I can't let you through with these, man. He's like, but these melons, I got these melons, right? He's really upset the melons. I remember one time, I can't remember where we went, it was somewhere, but he was late for the plane. He was late for the plane, they almost didn't let him on the plane because of the melons. Now, <laughs> serious, true story. Now, as I tell you the story, you're like, this is the stupidest thing ever. How could this guy not see that the melons were impacting his life, making his life worse than it was? But we're all doing that in some capacity. We're all believing that there's something that we're doing that's smart, because we're so smart and we're putting a lot of mental energy and willpower and focus into one area that does not help us at all. We're all doing it. You know, whether it's a video game or something that we think helps our life, but really doesn't help our life at all. What's an area you think you could be doing that? I wanna get some examples from you guys. That's just pulling from my, my stories. What are some areas that you think you could be putting a lot of willpower and energy into that you could transfer it to a more productive area of life? Here's what I want you to do for a moment, okay? I want you to just audit your life. I want you to take a moment and just look at your life in these areas of health, and you're, you're gonna write this down, by the way. Health. Yeah, health is number one. H-E-L-T-H. Health. Number two, you're gonna write down is friendships. Friendships that are taking your energy, taking your willpower away. Number three, is gonna be love life. Somebody you might be dating, that's taking your energy away, maybe even an ex that you're fantasizing about. Because you fantasize about your ex so much, you can't even form a new relationship because you spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day thinking about your ex. Okay? And also, you could, you could throw a career as well in there. What are things you're doing in your career that are taking energy out of you? Things that are wasting time. Are you in a dead end job? Are you in a job you don't like that takes away your energy from being able to go pursue a project you'd really want to do? So I want to be analyzing here, where are your fake victories? Maybe you have a job and that job gets you a short term check, but it's burning your time that you could be using to building a skill. Remember we talked just now about your core strengths? Maybe there's some core strength that you could be using that time to build up. So you've got to be aware of that as well, okay? So we've gotta be, what I wanna do is I'd like you to make a list of your closest friends, your job, your hobbies, your habits, and then I'd like you to rate A, one to 10, on what you get out of it, and B, one to 10, on what it takes from you. So what is it giving you, and what is it taking from you? You had uh, relationships in here as well? Like Every relationship, yeah. everything. Nice. Hobbies, habits, Vices, relationships, friendships, career. Yep. Is this the 10 that were closest to you that we see on the most like, frequent basis? So uh, when I said the 10, I'm saying rate it 1 to 10. 
upside and downside. What is it giving one to 10? What is it taking? Because I wanna be looking at those ones that are taking more than they're giving. Yeah. It's okay to have a bad habit. If you wanna go do Molly on the weekend, I never did it in my life, but if you wanna go do it, and you feel that you get so much out of it that the hangover from it is not, the, the, the downside is not as bad, I'm not gonna argue with you. I personally don't do it. I'm not gonna recommend it, but I'm not gonna argue with you. So if you wanna go get wasted with your friends, and it doesn't have a super bad hangover, maybe it could be worth it. But you see the point I'm making here, right? So what you wanna do is you want to be looking, like say you have a buddy and you really like your buddy and you do have a lot of fun together. Maybe it gives you an aid in value, but their negative side is a 10. So what's happening is it's depleting you more than it's giving to you. Most of you guys are chronically tired. Most of you guys are chronically just not getting the energy that you want. So we've got to start looking at the energy sucks here and the time sucks and looking at where you're getting more than you're giving. Like if you go to Starbucks every day, if you're like, you know what? I just love, you know, even though I sit in line for a bit, I love just sitting at Starbucks. It's relaxing. I don't just want to be in my house. I don't want to order that higher quality tea. I want to order, you know, cause Starbucks is not that great of quality tea, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. They frame it like it is. It's actually not. It's okay. You know, but you can get Gyokoru green tea. You get silver needle green, you know, white tea all that stuff, right? They're not gonna give you super premium tea. You're do you know about this? Are you a tea expert? No, no, it's just more of like you're getting in the weeds of something that you're so intensely. I'm super into it, yeah. yeah exactly. No, I love great tea. If, if you give me two hours of you, <laughs> you will fucking hate Starbucks. You're like, fuck this place, okay? okay, okay. Yeah, but just go get some Gyokoru green tea. L let me tell you what it has, okay? Let's get into this. <laughs> Gyokoru green tea has this thing in it called L-theodine. L-theodine is actually a relaxant. So you get caffeine with a relaxant in it, which then makes it where you don't get jitters. You get super fucking focused and it's loaded with antioxidants and it tastes way better. Once you taste a Gyokuru green tea, you taste Starbucks tea, you're like, this is disgusting. Silver needle white tea, same thing. It's beautiful and it's the same kind of thing. So you have to audit yourself and say, where are you wasting energy in your life? What are the small things that you're doing day to day that you think make you feel great that are actually keeping you down? Because while you're dealing with the minutia, and while you're fighting this inner little battle, you're actually losing the war, which is the bigger picture, right? Yeah, because, I mean, look at something like, say, going to Starbucks. Now, let's, let's think about, let's break that down. So you could go buy loose leaf tea, get a strainer, have that same tea at home. But to be fair, you may enjoy going to Starbucks because it gives you an excuse to get out of the house. How many people here go to like, Maybe not Starbucks, but like a place, like a tea place to go relax and get a tea here and there. Some of you guys do it? So let me ask you this. If you could go to say, I mean, there used to be Tivana in LA, we have Chato tea, but let's say that you could order some white silver needle tea from Amazon, and then let's say that you had a straighter at home, you'd get a, you'd get a 10 times better quality tea with more antioxidants, better tasting, uh, better for you, and way cheaper. But here's the other key. You'd, have, you'd save either the Uber or gas to get to Starbucks. You'd save waiting in line and you'd, save the t you'd, you'd actually get that time back. What do you guys think on average it takes you time-wise to go to Starbucks? 40 it's about 40 minutes. You got about 16 waking hours in a day. So my buddy Mikhail, he's very about sequencing, right? So he would look at me and he'd say, well, oh, and you like to go eat at Croft Alley in Los Angeles, but how long does it take you to Uber? Okay, what's the cost of the Uber? How long does it take to order? How long are you eating there? How long does it take to Uber back? The cost, the cost on it is fucking crazy. When you start adding up all the Ubers, you're, you're literally looking at like 700 bucks a month in Uber, added food expenses, and the food is not necessarily better than what you could quickly make at home. So. On the flip side though, sometimes you just wanna get out of the house. You see what I'm saying? So what I like to do when I audit is I include the spiritual component that sometimes you just wanna eat the ice cream. Sometimes you just wanna get out of the house. So it's okay if you have like what's called a vice or a bad habit, but here's the question. Let's say that you like to eat like a big nasty pizza. Is the fulfillment that you're getting from that big nasty pizza Raising you spiritually, because I actually do, but like, it, it might sound funny. I do believe that going out with your friends to get pizza and a big cake raises you spiritually. I actually do. I think it could be a lot of fun to go do that. Like, why do we discount that in self-help? I think there's a space for that. There's a space for a vice. And why do we talk like we don't do that when we all do do it? So just shut the fuck up. We do it. But the question is, for things like that, 
where is the line where, you know, for example, say that you go get super drunk and the next day you have a crazy hangover. Yeah, you got drunk with your friends, it's hella fun, but look how sick you feel the next day. That, in many cases, it wasn't worth it. So you've got to add up, say that you're getting a pleasure from the vice, maybe it hurts you a little bit, that's not a bad thing necessarily. But where it becomes bad is where it's depleting you more. Like it's actually spiritually sucking off you more than it's spiritually elevating you from the fun that you had. I go to, I used to go to like places like Starbucks and then I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Just order the shit off the fucking internet. I don't gotta go sit in fucking line. I save money off it. I get healthier from it, but I am, I am having it at home. You know, and sometimes I do like to, you know, cause I think about this. I'm like, do I like, that process of kind of sitting out there. Because there is something to be said about that, right? Croft Alley, I used to eat there at lunch every day. What city, are you LA based? Yep. So I love Croft Alley. You know, they made a 24 hour Croft Alley now at the Standard on Sunset, did you know that? Yep. So my favorite lunch restaurant in the whole city, they, they took over the kitchen at the Standard and in 24 hour you can go eat at the Standard. So if you eat late, it's great. The kale salad's actually really good. It doesn't sound good, it's really good. And get it with the turkey sausage. And it's clean turkey sausage. So. I ask myself when I go to Croft Alley, it's like, it's on Melrose Place in LA. It's like super cute. The Alfred's Tea Room's next door. You know, it's like, it's like you can just go there and relax. But then I start looking at the fucking Uber ride. You're looking at 12, 13 bucks, but you're also looking at about 30 minutes. And by the time that you wait for the Uber, call the Uber, call down the tip, you're looking at like a bunch of money. Then you're looking at, then you're fucking sitting there waiting. And yeah, it's kind of relaxing, but you could also do other shit to relax. Then, I mean, we used to go to Croft Alley back in the day, right? Yeah. I know it's yeah it's pretty sick but look at the amount of time that I spent on it right and then I asked myself if I could get those two hours back what other shit if, if we got say you're doing an eight-hour workday that's literally a quarter of your fucking workday so it's like you give me back those two hours how much more cash could I make I could fucking build a fucking Croft Alley in my fucking house what am I doing so that you know same thing with sauna like yeah I go to the sauna I just bought a fucking infrared through the fucking thing in my house yeah, I just got it from infraredsauna.com. It was like seven grand. Sounds crazy, right? But the time that it saved, I did the math on it. By the time that I saved to get to the spa, literally, I'm saving money on it. So what you just saw is not about me. It's all about who? You, man. I care about you, it's all about you. You are the one that this is for, you're the one that's important. So what I wanna tell you is this, be very careful about the demons that come into your life and try to suck you dry of energy. There's a constant war that's happening in your life that you're probably not even aware of. That's outside forces trying to suck you dry and bleed you, okay? Emotional vampires, as it were. And once they're in your life, it's very, very hard to get them out. It's kind of like if you ever saw uh, one of those horror movies where once you invite the vampire into your front door of your house, like they, they kill you <laughs> and you can't get rid of them. So be aware of the emotional vampires in your life, the emotional areas in your life that are just sucking you dry. Use your spider sense to constantly manage them and, and try to be intelligent about what you're doing because all your actions have a repercussion, all your behavior has a repercussion, and the people you let into your life have a repercussion as well. So I made this video for you because it's something I struggled with tremendously for a lot of years, and I thought that it just went too long without being said. So that's the benefit for you. And I want you to continue to learn this as I put more videos out about social intelligence over the next few months leading up to the summertime where I have something very, very cool happening. So the best thing you can do is share this video with a friend and also get into the comment section down here, below, below, below. Let's start a conversation this video isn't meant to be something you just watch passively. It's meant to be something that you engage in with me. And we talk about how this affects you in your life. And what I'm gonna do is for the first 24 hours that this video goes up, I'm gonna answer all the comments down below and any question related to this video. I will personally do it. It won't be a machine or a bot or an assistant. It'll be me down there in the comments personally answering all your questions about this video because I wanna have that conversation going. This dialogue is very important for us and for your growth. So it solidifies the information in your head and makes it real to you. That's it, that's all as always. Keep in touch and don't be a stranger. Cheers.